Let's see. Okay. So how are you doing this morning? I'm good. I'm having fun. I mean, I think I think it's it's interesting that the word charity or charitable gets a bad rap. Mm -hmm. Not right on the surface. Oh, I'm charitable. <laughs> right there you go, ugh. <laughs> no. So so my journey has been really with this movie is to make the word charitable sexy, powerful, a little troubling, a little subversive, but authentic. And the only way to really do it, I realized, with, with Dan's help, don't let Dan know I said that because <laughs> he and I are two good friends that, for me to compliment him too much, was to make it uncharitable. And that was what he had said. It's got to be called uncharitable. And I fought him for a long time. And I realized he was really right because that allows the word charitable to be out in the open. And also for a movie, you got to have, it, you got to feel like a movie's kind of sexy and kind of troubling and kind of dangerous. I once had a friend actually, um, uh, I'm terrible with names. He made, but he, he wrote Bonnie and Clyde. Um, and um, oh, what's it? Ben, uh, Robert Benton. Robert Benton said one time, the way you make a movie that works is in the first scene, do something horrible. So the audience is on the edge of its seat and knows they're dealing with a maniac and they don't know what's going to happen next. <laughs> so if it were charitable, you'd go, this is a little boring. This is a little hypocritical. This is a little, I'm not going to watch this movie. But uncharitable sort of gives you a little door open. I want to take a peek and look inside. So I call it really a movie, not a documentary anymore, because I really tried to make something emotional because the subject actually of trying to figure out what the hell to do to help other people and help yourself and somehow function in a world that's falling apart is a pretty interesting subject. So, so yeah, so it's, it's a movie and that's why I'm having such a good time now because it's really fun to stir it up right. and people think. All right. Well, that, that's a good answer to my question. How are you? <laughs> so um, I watched it last night. I enjoyed it. And uh, that's good. Um, I like how it start, starts with uh, talking about how Dan built up his charities and then what he and the others went through, but then it ends on a hopeful, positive note. Uh, was that the plan from the beginning? No, I didn't know what the hell I was doing in the beginning. <laughs> I had no idea. It took seven years to make this movie. <sighs> and for me, it was a massive education because I work in the for-profit sector, sure. generally. Once I've made movies that haven't made money, so I haven't always been <laughs> in the for-profit sector. But generally, I, you know, I, and I, and I do believe in the dynamics of, of you know, the, our system, capitalism, but I think it needs a lot of help. And I think it doesn't really w deal with the the sector that is left behind. Right. And it's often left behind for very legitimate reasons. I mean, the homeless, 40% of the homeless are, are war veterans who haven't really been taken care of. And Wounded Warrior, of course, was addressing that as, as best it could, you know. Um, all of these things, all pretty much all of the issues that charity deals with are very difficult issues that the that the for-profit market doesn't yet quite understand there is a profit in it. I mean, I could go through example after example of if we can marry these two in a lot of ways, if we can bring charity into, well, if we can bring charity into the for-profit sector, and we are, there's things going on that are interesting. I think this film, um, from what I can see now as it's beginning to step out into the world, can be a profound um, sort of declaration of independence for a movement that I think will profoundly shift the 10 million people who work in the sector. Um, and, um, and it's really fun and exciting to be kind of in the tsunami of what seems to be unfolding. So you said you were friends with Dan. Is that how you got involved with the movie? Yeah, yeah. I've known him from when he was coming up in the AIDS rides and it was all going on. I never did the AIDS rides. Um, I didn't really pay any attention. He and I were friends just because we got along and loved to talk about stuff. And we never really talked about either one of us in our careers. I mean, he knew mm -hmm. I made movies. I knew he was in the charitable sector, but I didn't, we didn't really talk about any of that until um, years later, I did a documentary 
called in utero, which was really impactful in the in the prenatal and perinatal community. Also quite an emotional film and still has a really important life actually. Um, but uh, he said, you think maybe there's a, a movie here? And and I wasn't really sure at first. And then I kind of went, eh, maybe, because there were a lot of other people who'd gone through the same thing, Steve Nardese, Jason Russell, Roxanne Spallett, and a lot of other people. Um, um, and I thought, well, I'll be a year or two making it. It's been seven years, which is not unusual for, for a movie, really. And it really has taken me from, I'm doing something for a buddy, to this has got to change. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be one of the people that really engages in it as a grandfather, as someday a great grandfather, I hope I will be, whether I'm alive or not, that I really want to be, you know, you reach a point in your life when you go, yeah, whatever, I've done a bunch of cool things. Now, what the hell am I doing for my grandkids? What am I doing for all these people around me who I actually feel a lot of love for, rich, poor, middle, whatever it is, I feel, you know, we're so lost in a way and so it became more and more engaging. And now it's become, okay, the movie's done. Literally, you didn't see the finished movie. Ah. Even now. It's very close to being done, but not quite. And drives me as a filmmaker kind of crazy. <laughs> but now it's about a movement. And one of the things we're doing, part of making a movie, is how do you get out into the world? So we're doing a theatrical release, hopefully a large theatrical release. We are in 30 cities now, and we want to be in more cities. And we are giving away tickets. Oh, wow. First come, first serve. We are trying to make it free for the people in need. Mm -hmm. People in need are rich, middle class, and poor, because no one understands really how this sector has been imprisoned. And this is, I think, kind of a movie that's a declaration of independence for the sector and freeing it to really go out and do a lot. So it's it's really designed, and it's because of charity they were putting together enough money. First of all, the whole movie was put together with donations. No one was going to invest in this right. movie. And now we're getting donations um, to have the movie seen for free. We've done a couple of screenings already. And those screenings have raised the money for donations. And what we're hoping happens, and I think it has proven itself, when you see the movie, you then donate afterwards for the next people to see the movie right next people the next people. that's the plan so is that why it took seven years because of the funding or and just because i couldn't figure the movie out <laughs> oh <laughs> i think i think yeah it was the pandemic it yeah. was the funding definitely the funding but it was really you know so the producer in me would say it's the funding or maybe the producer in me would say the director didn't know what the hell he was doing. And the producer would say that. And the director would say, yeah, well, you didn't get me enough money. But generally, I have found as a producer, I would say my director was incredibly irresponsible because he just went, I'm going to keep cutting this till I get it right. I, I went through six, seven um, um, editors because a movie with of this sort, the editor in, in tandem with the director is really the writer and the designer of the movie. And that's that's Kinga, and I never can pronounce her last name. I got her, Oral, Oralkowski. Um, she's Polish, she drives me crazy. Um, and she's a poet. And, um, and that took a long, long time to get right. And literally, I was driving everyone crazy. Well, the director was driving everyone crazy until about a week ago, because I wanted to do some more things with the credit sequence at the end, which you, you won't have seen. Yeah. Um, and a couple of other little things that were irresponsible in every way from the producer's point of view to get the movie to the place where um, it's really right. But the producer is the one who went, we got to give the tickets away. We got we to gotta really go. I'm trying to raise a million dollars to get $700,000 worth of tickets out to anyone who wants them, who then donate and it begins to become, you know, a, 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 it develops, it does it itself, because going to the theater as a, as a director, a film director primarily, is a community experience. This is post-pandemic. It's still dicey a little bit, but it's important that we get together and connect right, left, and center, because the movie was funded by people on the, on the right, people on the left, people on the center. Charity is nonpartisan, which is really interesting, and we just need to get back to community again. So, so that's the plan. <laughs> Okay. Well, I really, uh, you talked about the credits thing. I really enjoyed the part at the end with the singing uh, a lot because I was watching, you know, I'm, I'm older. And so I'm like, 
oh, these must be some famous friends of his that I have no idea who they are. And then it showed that they were people from from the different charities. I'm like, oh, that's really cool. They sing so well. So that that was really great. Great, 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 great. Did you have the version where Dan comes on as a video and, and, and asks for funding? I think so. At the end? Okay, At the end, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Almost, it was almost done by then. Okay, good. Yeah, good. <laughs> so I know that he, he wrote the book. It's based on uh, but uh, was there an actual script or do you just put it together? <laughs> <laughs> um, there was no script. And, you know, it's funny. The book, I read the book. I took notes. I did all that. The TED Talk was much more what, um, you know, we shaped things around. But it was really the interviews. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the interviews with him, um, the interviews with all the other people. And then once you have those interviews and you have transcripts and you're looking at, you're trying to figure out the movie. And it took... It took four years of pretty much constant work to figure out how the hell to put it together. Wow. And, you know, I think is maybe someone could have done it faster and maybe even better, but no one else showed up. So I had to do it, you know, <laughs> so oh, wow. me and Kinga did it. Yeah. OK. And um, gosh, uh, they tell me I have one minute left. Um, so how did you decide which charities to include? Um it just sort of, they seemed really powerful and really interesting. I mean, Wounded Warriors seemed really important. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and it's interesting about Wounded Warriors. So Bill O'Reilly, I mean, really made a mistake with Dan, you know, and I think he was misinformed and um, and I get it. But Bill O'Reilly got it right on Wounded Warrior. He came out and really defended them. You know, there wasn't mm -hmm. the place in the movie to put that, but I just want to note that, again, this is nonpartisan. So right. Wounded Warriors, story, Jason Russell's story is so dramatic and so important and, and so complex. And then Dan's story really... So those are the three stories, Roxanne Spillett's story also. Mm -hmm. So it was like, are there other stories? Yes, yes, yes. You know, they, they say, you know, you don't finish a movie, you abandon it, which I think is true. If I, you know, what I think I want to do now, I mean, there's a situation with CBS recently with the um, SBCA and um, I wanted to go, you know, I wanted to go after them. I don't want to go after the networks. I want to educate the networks. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go after anyone anymore. I want to just educate them. I mean, I really do think the most powerful, most dangerous most brutal weapon there is, is what Gandhi and Martin Luther King did, is come in peace. And and th then you're impossible to fight with, you know? So so I think, and again, that's charity. That's about charity. So so yeah, would it, would it, are there many, many other cases? Yes, are there, also the other thing I would say is, you know, uh, uh, Rudy Espinosa, who's in the film and wonderful, at one point said, you know, people are gonna say, you know, this is all about white guys. You know, and, and there's an element of that that's really true. Um, but that's because white guys are in a position to lose and get screwed over in big, dramatic ways. You know, a, a lot of the sectors, a lot of the people who work in the sector um, who are, you know, minorities, I don't like that term anymore. People but who aren't, um... Well, no, no, just people who aren't white. I mean, you know, enough of the white people, enough of the white men. I mean, time to get us off the stage. You know, I'm getting old enough. I can say that, you know, the young <laughs> white guys are not going to say it. But I think, I think, um, there are so many smaller um, minority um, run charities that go under just as much, but the stories are smaller and those stories need to be told and it needs to stop. Right. It needs to stop so that they are able to do the work that they do um, as effectively as they can do it. Well, thank you for talking to me today and I hope it does really well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Take care. See you. Yeah, bye.